Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Prehistoric Speculation, where today we're doing something a little bit different, and I'm going to rank all of the DLCs for Jurassic World Evolution 1. I thought I'd do this as there's not too much news to cover with Jurassic World Evolution 2 at the moment, and there's only so many theories I can make on it, so I thought I'd do this. It'll be a bit of fun, it'll be a nice little change up I think. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. So, we're going to start with F tier and move up to uh, S tier. So we're going to start from worst to best. This is only my opinion, obviously, so don't take any of this too seriously. If you have... Actually, yeah, put your own tier list in the comments, actually. I will enjoy to see those, so please do that. So, let's start with F tier. In F tier, not too surprisingly, I don't think, is the Raptor Squad skin pack. This isn't because it's necessarily a bad pack or DLC, but it is only a skin DLC, and it only adds four skins. So I think for... The value for money, it's not as good as any of the other DLCs, because it doesn't even add any new dinosaurs at all. With every single other DLC, you'll at least get three new dinosaurs, and sometimes even a story. So to pay what I think is 79p for four skins is a bit bit low. It's something that should have been in the game from launch, to be fair, honestly. Yeah, it's just not as good as any of the other DLCs. The skins themselves are quite good. I have no issue of those, but it's just it's not n enough for the money you have to pay. Then, moving on to D tier, we have Claire's Sanctuary. This is one I do have issue with. This one isn't the lack of content, but so much the content we got wasn't my favourite. With this DLC, yes, we did get three new dinosaurs, plus a whole, like, new story campaign of rescuing the dinosaurs from Isla Nublar and moving them over to Sanctuary Island. Sort of a, a different take on the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom events, where it does actually go properly, and the dinosaurs get moved to a sanctuary instead of sold at Black Market. But yeah, the campaign had a lot of missions that were very boring and very grindy. Like, there was a mission on Isla Nublar where you had to medicate every single dinosaur, and to use the dinosaurs in the main campaign, you have to five-star the sanctuary, which is also a quite a long progress, and the entire sanctuary, none of the missions there are too dynamic. It does also add the paleobotany system, which doesn't do much for the game. Unlike it one in Jurassic World Evolution 2, where it's sort of the only way to feed your creatures, this added so little that it was just worthless to do. It took too much time and effort for the little boost to rating that you would get from the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs themselves, I had no issue with, really. Uh, I was fine with the Oplocephalus. It was more realistic as an ankylosaur which I like to see. Uh, they're moving away from the Jurassic World designs in Jurassic World Dominion and slightly more towards realism, and they seem to be doing that a lot more in the second game too, which is nice. The Aranosaurus I wasn't so much of a fan of because it didn't really have a sail as much as it was just thick. It was a thick dinosaur, and it was a bit odd. Uh, I didn't have any issue with the design. I, qu I actually quite liked it, but again, it was just a bit strange, and it should have looked better. It should have looked more like its Camp Cretaceous variant. Then there was the Albertosaurus. I have no issue with the Albertosaurus, either is actually quite a nice dinosaur. I like the smooth skin, I would use it quite a lot in my part, but again I don't think it's enough to bring it back from the lacklustre story and missions, and the main feature being paleobotany. It also does have quite a high price point, making it a bit less attractive than some of the other high price point, like, DLCs. Both of the other DLCs, Doctor Wu's uh, campaign and the Dr Return to Jurassic Park campaign, are both better than this, so yeah, it should have done with a bit more interesting campaign, because it wasn't great. Now, moving on to C tier, we have the first actual just straight up dinosaur pack, which is the Cretaceous dinosaur pack. This dinosaur pack for me was okay. It was a bit small, so it's only three dinosaurs in this, which is, it did a few of these. There was the carnivore, herbivore, uh, and Cretaceous pack, I think, I think that's it. But the three dinosaurs we got on it, I quite liked the Carcharodonsaurus, that was very nice. The skins on it were quite cool, and it had some cool spikes down the back. I really liked the Iguanodon, it was very unique to the game, and it was really nice. I sort of liked all the stuff it added, but yeah, it wasn't, because of the lack of dinosaurs in this, I can't really bullet too high, because some of the other stuff that's in A and S tier add a lot more to the game than this. Did. I wasn't also a huge fan of the Dreadnoughtus. It was a bit odd. It was sort of weird. I like. I much prefer the Dreadnoughtus design in Jurassic World Dominion. Actually, that would have been better and nicer to see. And hopefully, we see that in Jurassic World Evolution too. I'm hoping it's Dreadnoughtus now, I'm not just making things up, but yeah, that design would be nicer to see in Jurassic World Evolution 2. The next one in C is the Carnivore Dinosaur Pack. The Carnivore Dinosaur Pack was an interesting one, because none of the designs in it I thought were bad, they just didn't add huge amount. So we got Aquacanthosaurus, which is yet another large carnivore T-Rex sort of thing. The design for that could have been a lot, a lot cooler, I think. It could have had like a proper spine, really setting itself apart from the other creatures, but instead they just made it really chunky. They don't like to do sails, it seems. They did the same thing with the Aranosaurus and the Aquacanthosaurus too. They just made it really thick 
and it's just weird. It wasn't too bad. I really like the skins for it. It's very parity and vibrant, but not enough to bring it back. The Herrera sauce is my favourite dinosaur in Jurassic World Evolution. Or maybe not my favourite dinosaur, but it's very high up there. I do really like the design for it. It's a good alternative to this other small carnivores we have, like the Deinonychus and Velociraptor. I just much prefer the design. The skins for it are quite nice too. Just all around a great dinosaur. Now, Proceratosaurus isn't my favourite. It's very similar to the Trudon, just with a crest, and that is really the only difference between them other than the fact it doesn't have the venomous bite and that sort of stuff. I think they could have gone with an actual Proceratosaurus design, something a lot more accurate than that, and that would have been really cool to see. Like, a, a small carnivore, but bigger than the Trudon, something more like the Herrerasaurus, actually. Would have been really nice to see, but we got the small Trudon-y thing, which drags it down. I think I think without that dinosaur, if that was something better, it was a real Proceratosaurus. I might even bump that up to B tier, but because it's not, I think it stays in C. I think that's a good place for it to go. Now, moving on to B tier, we have two DLCs here. One of them being the Herbivore DLC. This DLC, again, is very... It's in the same vein as the other two that we've just talked about, where it's three dinosaurs added, so it doesn't add a huge amount. However, the three dinosaurs in this one, I think the designs on all of them are very good. The Nigrosaurus is very cool. It's like ploddy. It's like an elephant. It's nice. The dry, the Dryosaurus is very, very cute. The Hamalocephale is very cute too. It's also a bit more unique. It's somewhere between a Dryosaurus and a Pachycephalosaurus. It's nice to see two new, uh, two returning dinosaurs from JPOG as well. It's sort of fan service for the people that played that game. And yeah, it was just, it was a really cool DLC. I think it was the best exclusive dinosaur pack DLC other than the five dinosaur pack DLCs. It's the best three dinosaur pack DLC, sorry. So yeah, I really liked that one. Uh, I think it was, it's just a nice one. It's a good one to add. They didn't add too much to the game, but they're very cute and it's nice to have them running around your park. Now moving on to the other one in B tier, we have the Secrets of Dr. Wu DLC. This is a good DLC. I have very few issues with it, other than some of the dinosaur designs, and plus, with the new added genetic system where it would have new stuff, I have no issues with that. I liked a lot of that stuff. However, some of it felt a bit pointless, such as the ones that would change the grassland requirements and that. The only one I end up, ended up using was the social requirements and population requirements changes, because it would let you add, like, five T-Rexes in an enclosure or something, which is something that was nice to be able to do for just for creative reasons, having a big enclosure with multiple T-Rexes or something like that. However, that system did end up breaking the system where you would only be able to see the social and environmental requirements of a dinosaur after you had released it. This made it so you could scroll across to the social social requirements section of it, and it would just show you all of their stats without even unlocking that genetic thing. As you know, you do need to unlock it, but it would just show you all the stats, which sort of defeated the point of the whole thing. But other than that, the, the genetic system was okay. It felt a bit pointless. I did like the Stegoceratops and the Spinoraptor. Both of them, I thought, were really cool additions. They added quite a bit. I did like them. They sort of, they were nice. They were sort of monsterish. y They were properly hybrids. They were nice. The Ankylodocus, though, on the other hand, was a bit of an abomination in my eyes. It was a bit odd. Um, yeah, just not great as a design. The Allura Titan as well, I did quite like that, and the Trudon, because it was, it was original, and it had the Venomous Bite, which was very cool to see. It was like, uh, it was different, and that made it quite good. So, Overall, all the dinosaur designs were okay. The story design as well, I really liked. I less liked the Isla Muerta East a bit. I did like the Takano Research Facility missions, because then you'd be unlocking the hybrids instead of just doing random research on an on a different part of Isla Muerta, which was basically just a regular island, but a bit different, really. You just unlocked some different dinosaurs. However, the Isla Takano Research Facility did have some cool stuff on it, especially with unlocking the hybrids, as that's something very different from what we've seen already. So yeah, overall, that was a pretty good DLC. I haven't really got too many complaints with it, but yeah, I did enjoy it. And I think if you're going to go for a larger DLC, this is a good one to go for. However, it's not the best, as we'll get to in a minute. Now, moving on to the best of the best DLCs, the ones that I would highly recommend anyone watching this video gets if you have the money to do that sort of thing and you still play the game, I do recommend you get these. So, the first one of these is the Fallen Kingdom DLC. I feel a bit cheaty including this, however, it is technically a DLC. It is, a it is also a free update for everyone, however, it is classified as a DLC. I really like all the dinosaurs in this because I, like I like the designs from Fallen Kingdom. I like the Carnotaurus and the Sinus 
Tyrannoceratops and the Stigmolic and the Allosaurus. I like all of them. They're all very cool designs. And yeah, I think it was just made sense for them to be in the game. And it's nice additions. You can't really go out and buy this because you should already have this on your game. If not, I don't know what you're doing, but it should already be there. But I do like all the designs. They're all very nice. There's not much to talk about them because you've probably seen them in the film. So there's not much to talk about that there. But they are some of my favourite designs in the game. Now, moving on to the other A-tier DLC, we have the Deluxe Dinosaur Pack. This is a pack that includes five dinosaurs and two of these dinosaurs. My favourite dinosaurs in the whole game. The other three I could take or leave, but because of these two I've sort of bumped it up, so this one is heavily based on my opinion, basically. This includes the Styracosaurus, the Cryctonosaurus, the Majungasaurus, the Archaeornithomimus, and the Suchomimus. Suchomimus I love. It's my favourite dinosaur in the game. Scrap Herrerasaurus. This is easy easily the best dinosaur in the game and anyone who disagrees is wrong. Argue with that in the comments as you will. I also really like the Styracosaurus. Uh, it's something that should have been in the base game I think because it's a very popular dinosaur. But I'm fine with it being in the DLC and because it's in the DLC it's, bun it's booped it up to Ata. Booped, I don't know what I mean by that. But you know, it has. Cryptonosaurus, I could take or leave because it's just another Stegosaur. Archaeonathomimus had its use. It was sort of slithery almost. It was like somewhere between a snake and a Gallimimus. And the Majungasaurus was okay. It wasn't my favourite. If I had to uh, have a medium carnivore in my park, I would always choose the Metricanthiosaurus or the Carnotaurus or something like that. But Majungasaurus sometimes would be nice to have as a little mix-in. So yeah, that's the Deluxe Dinosaur DLC. Now, we're going to move on to the very best DLC I think is in this game. The S tier, D the only S tier DLC being the Return to Jurassic Park DLC. This DLC I think is incredible. It's what every DLC in the, in the future for Jurassic Evolution 2 should look like, I believe. And yeah, I, just, I was a huge fan. This is by far the biggest amount of content added in the DLC. While it may not add the largest amount of dinosaurs, it definitely adds the biggest amount of stuff. This DLC included a full story where you would go to Isla Nublar in 1993 and try and save Jurassic Park. You would go to Isla Sauna to do some stuff there too, and it was really cool. It was just a whole nice thing. This also added the Tyrannodon, the aviary. These were in looped animations, although it was very cool. This will be getting upgraded in Jurassic World Evolution 2 to free-flying animations, but still, still okay. I'm fine with that. Um, it gave everything a complete Jurassic Park overhaul. So there's a new arrival thing, there's new toilets, there's new restaurants in the Jurassic Park thing. You could, sadly, you couldn't bring these in to the main campaign or, or sandbox mode and mix and match with the Jurassic World stuff, but it's still, still very nice. It was a very pretty-looking DLC. It also added... I think probably about 50 new skins to the game from Jurassic Park variants. So you'd get like the 1993, you'd get the Jurassic Park 1 Velociraptor, Jurassic Park 2 Velociraptor, Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor, all of them would be added into this DLC. We also got the Compsognathus. It's just it's just a huge DLC, really. There's so much added to it. It's just insane. If you're going to buy a DLC and you have the amount of, and you have enough money to buy the, uh, this DLC, I think it's probably the most expensive, but it is by far the best. I'd even say the best value for money of all the DLCs, too. That is my review of all of the DLCs for Jurassic World Evolution. I really hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe. It really does help me out. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. This has been a bit of a different video, but I really hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.